You know, really, that's the weirdest thing about doing these videos, is they're easily some of the easiest ones for me to make. They're a little more time consuming, because they don't... Like, with a, with a reaction video, they tend to go to a little bit of time. Uh, they, you actually ha you have to have the episode itself, and then you have my huge-ass fucking intros, and then a little bit for the outro. Or just whatever you need to get your final thoughts out about the episode. With this, it can just fucking go. They just fucking go forever. Again, super easy to make. It's just me sitting here talking to you guys. And that's really, really cool. I really enjoy it. It's why I would fucking love doing uh, these and uh, why I fucking adore doing Katawa Shoujo. That and I just I fucking really love that game. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it's it's one of those things where, I don't know. I Why don't I do two a week? Obviously, I need to make sure that I can physically do that each week. Uh, as we've proven, I can't always do that. But I would like to. I would love to be able to do two a week. And I'm going to... I think I'm going to try to do that from this point on. Um, at least until I get Pokemon back up and running. Which would probably take up a little bit extra of my time. And therefore, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to do two every week. But I'm going to try and do two every week. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to release the second one. Because right now I've just been putting them in spots where I had open spots. Uh, like... Last week was Tuesday because uh, we finished Frank's, and then uh, this week was uh, Monday because we finished fucking Hina. So th that's not the name of the show. It's not fucking Hina. Um, Chris, it could have been an adult. You don't know. I know she's a kid, and she, I this is it's digging a hole. You're digging a hole, Shannon. Stop. 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 Cease. Um, <clears throat> point is, <laughs> point is. Um, I don't know why, I just, I'm, I'm gonna try and do two each week if I can. Uh, especially if they're gonna be stuck being on the shorter side sometimes. Um, I hope you guys are, I, I mean, I know y'all fuckers will be okay with it, cause y'all just like, motherfucker, you're going so fucking slow. So, doing two a week would probably be for the best. So, I'm gonna do what I can. Um, I don't know what time I would release a second episode. I can't, I'm not gonna put them both on the same day. Just cause... Just make a big giant episode if I'd done that. Um, but like, I could I could probably do two a week. I just don't know where I'd put it. Again, maybe on Tuesday or Thursday because the well I know because those are also the least viewed week, you know, weekdays. I don't know if I do it to help flush it out more or if I do it <clears throat> to. But that might handicap that. I don't know what we're gonna do. I have no fucking idea. Point is, hi. Hey, hey, <clears throat> Again, I'm literally choking on nothing. What the fuck is wrong with me? Hey, hi-ho. I need to take a drink. <laughs> Three minutes into this video, and we've literally done nothing but talk about shit that isn't actually relevant to the story. Um, <clears throat> hey, hi-ho, and howdy, everybody. My name is Shannon Elshook, and welcome yet again to another episode of The Fruit of Cressaia by Frontoing. Um, and uh, what happened to the last one? We talked about holding hands and chewing bubble gum. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. This is right after I recorded that. So I'm... I'm in a way. I'm very curious to see what people thought of that. Because that's either the best thing that I've ever said. Or the fucking worst. And the, the worst part is I didn't even get out the, the, the words. Let me put... I don't even want to say it. Let me put you in my mouth. The first time, I got like, let me put you, and then I fucking collapsed under the, <laughs> under the fucking thing. Which, again, wasn't even that funny. Um, not really relevant, but point. We had a lot of amine in the last episode. Manamana. I did it again. do 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 Not manamana. That ruins the joke, you fucking idiot. Amine. do 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 There you go. I nailed it. Fuck you. I'm sorry. <laughs> With love. Tenderly. After you go on a date. I, protection is a thing. And then... Get like some... Uh... What's his name? I always want to say Colin Hay, but it's not Colin Hay. Phil Collins. That's why. It's because they're both Colin. Well, it's Phil. Very... I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. That's one of the best songs in the world. Also, it totally works for sex. Um, Let's do episode 10. 
of Grisaia before I dig myself a fucking deep asshole. More than I already have. I've dug about 12 holes starting from the hole that I started from, and it just it needs it to cease. We're going to move on. Also, I'm apparently in love with using the word cease. A hobby is a window that gives you a fresh perspective on the world, or so my sister said. I was about to say you're a bad goddamn poet, but uh, you're wrong. Your sister was, apparently. Um, <clears throat> she's dead, right? I'm trying to remember. Yes, she she is, Shannon. Thank you for reminding everyone for making it sad, you fucking ass. Um, but when I was a kid, struggling through my daily life was all was about all I could handle. I disliked and avoided change, even when it might have brought me something new. So my sister's recommendation was to at least try reading books. The sister of mine... Uh, that sister of mine was an unbelievably voracious bookworm herself. Dude, I respect it. I'm all about it. I find that shit sexy as hell. Um, what? Um, and she began to push the ones she finished on me. I soon picked up a reading habit, although I didn't find any particular meaning in it at the time. My sister's dead now, and my pa Yep, there we go. Brought it up. As are my parents and my master. Yet I'm still reading. The sister who taught me to read books, the parents who weren't angry at me when I was reading books, and the master who praised me for reading books, buying me as many as I wanted. I'm grateful to them now, since I've found something, some meaning in the act of reading. Holy shit. Don't stab me. Um. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I may have several of them. Yeah. I turn around in response to Yumiko's greeting to find her carrying a sizable load of paperback and hardcover books. You're a book person. Are you being human towards me? Did you not see the last episode? Um, sure. I appreciate it as always. Are you guys actually sharing books like that? That's kind of sweet. Also, I don't know why I'd ever think that you weren't into books. Look at you. You're the purple-haired anime character. This is just how it does. I'm gonna... That makes the knife thing a lot worse from a Doki Doki perspective. And there's... We already talked about Gata with Jojo. I'm just sad now. Um, I didn't read what I was supposed to. S Convenient. Um, as anyone with a long-term reading habit is well aware, books pile up before you know it, dude. <laughs> I fucking know. I don't have so many. I have read two of them. Um, it just feels good to have them, you know. I'm a sucker for physical media. Um, that said, it's hard to just throw them away. And selling them to a used bookstore feels disrespectful to the author. The ideal is to find another avid reader to dump them on. Dude, I get that. Incidentally, before I can't, before I can, I feel like there should be a period in there, or not period, but a comma. Otherwise, this just feels questionable to me. Had apparently been pushing the books she finished on onto the library. Now she's established her own private shelf in there, full of pleasure reads. Most likely she spotted me, but right, I was about to say, what do, what do you read, baby girl? What are you into? Tell me about your life. Um, Most likely she spotted me by coincidence as she was carrying her books there and figured she could save herself the walk. Heavy, right? Here. I slide my hands on the books Sakaki's carrying. Hi. Come here often. I'm sorry. Watch it. Don't take your hands off yet. The books are gonna fall. Oh, oh my, and I didn't, I didn't notice. What are we gonna do about that? Of course it is. Don't worry, my hygienic standards are higher than you might expect. <laughs> you complain too much. Alright, I gotta hold on him. You can let go. I mean, generally speaking, you aren't the picture of sensitivity either. Um, no offense. That's so. Anyway, I will gratefully read the books, and when I finish one, I will return it to the Sakaki collection. So if uh, you want to reread any of them, they'll be in the library. Oh, you ruined this, my boy. You have that cute, adorable blushiness going on, and I, I respected that. Yeah. I take a quick look at the titles of the books I'm holding. Moby Dick! Uh, the, 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 <laughs> not gonna continue with what I was gonna say. Sohei, Sohei Akai, The Decisive Pudding Battle. Kumabata Takaru. Nailed it. Um, Yesterday is Black Cat. Hiro Atsuko, The Exit of the Desert. That is a, an interesting selection of books. Oh, stop giving me more to read. I don't fucking know these names. I know that one. 
not like in as I know that as as a writer. I just know that that's a name because <laughs> English. Uh, Sano Takumi. Takumi? <sighs> Getting emotions. Um, Professor Takeda's dinner. Ethan Crow, an insolent woman. Scandalous. And per perhaps sexist. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't read it. Um, Shinomikazuma, you blew it, Omari. Although she reads quite a variety of genres and authors, it seems that Sakaki fundamentally likes whodunits. Of the six books she passes on to me, four are mysteries. Come to think of it, I could easily see Sakaki stare, sitting at a detective's desk, using her brains for... I could see that, too. Flipping up one of the books, I speak towards the shadow of a nearby pillar. Makina, how long do you plan on hiding there? <laughs> oh, fucking busted. Now this is a whodunit if I've ever seen it. I'm not mad or anything. How about you come out? Because no one could possibly fit behind one of those pillars. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. It's just rude. Also, I actually looked up from one of the earlier episodes, and he was talking about like how he towers over Machina, being his height. Motherfucker's like five nine. I'm six goddamn three. I'm a fucking mutant. Um. Like, right, like, people generally are a little shorter, for, like, from the eastern side of the world, right? Am I crazy about that? Is that fucking racist? I don't know. Like, like generally, that's the case, right? Am I not crazy? So, like, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised that I'm potentially a little taller, and I'm already a fucking giant here. I'm just saying. Machina would literally be, like, to my fucking hips, and you could take that in a lot of terrible places, but I'm not such a dirty-minded fool like you. You savage animals, you. Ignore everything I said about Sachi and Bubblegum in the last episode. Um, your aura is too crude. I am secretly Lucario, and I can sense you even when you're hidden. Pokemon jokes, bitch. <laughs> Forgive if you're boy. Um, I just said that for the hell of it. You were casting a shadow on the floor. I could tell it was you from the height in that shaggy head. I mean, you only put like four points into stealth. You at least gotta get two more. You ain't gonna get nowhere unless you got at least like six. Maybe one of them perks that boosts your ability. Like it is like reduces your quietness, but no, improves your quietness by like 10%. It's one of the higher ones. It's usually like one or two at first. You gotta put, pump a couple points into those ones. Like I. Life's a hell of an RPG. Um. Pretty much. Why were you hiding in the first place? Aww. I can't tell if that's the face of a nightmare or an I like that you say words like hiding. Like, I realize it's in a different... It's, it's Japanese, so it's different, but I like that. I find that adorable. You don't get along with Sakaki? Is there any human that Yumi-chan likes? She apparently likes my boy's hands, but that's about all we got. Hmm. <clears throat> on the other hand, I'm pretty sure Sakaki said something like, I think Irusu-san <laughs> avoids me on purpose. That is about the twelfth time I've almost fucking died on nothing. What the fuck is happening? Am I literally dying? Dear doctor people, what the fuck is that about? I literally just stopped breathing mid-sentence. What the fuck? Um, you're in a state of mutual wariness. Well, I suppose this does happen sometimes. Skaki, I got a person who doesn't reveal her thoughts easily, and Makina, who's, who feels most secure when she's burrowed her way into someone's heart. Uh, their personal comfort zones may be incompatible. Well, it's foolish to expect everyone to get along. A long time ago, I knew a guy who hated black people with a passion. Fiends, man. Why you gotta be like that, my dude? Why can't you just select people, my dude? What the fuck's up with you, my dude? Um, I'm sorry. That's, that is my anti-racist song. Why you can't just love people, my dude? So you get fucking just beat in an alleyway somewhere. Like, what? No, I'm done. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Point is, it's just fucking stupid. Both of these things. 
racist shit and my, my apparent counter to it. Um, and nothing anyone could said could get him to change his mind. Skaki Yumiko and Yurisu Makina. There's no need to forcibly push them together, but in their case, maybe a mutual compromise is called for. I don't think Sakagi dislikes you, Makina. So just try not to hate, your, hate her yourself. Right, right. I get it. I see. You're implying I did anything. If Yuji did something, he did it off screen while I wasn't fucking looking. Because <laughs> I'm. She's still at the bottom of the list. I've grown to like her a little bit, but I'm sorry. I. At this point, everyone's just got such a fucking high head start above her. It's hard to even move her around. She, she 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 took too goddamn long. Um, well, it's not like we're uh, particularly close, but I mean, we have a common interest in books, so I guess that helped get things started. Of course, I get the idea Sakaki mostly views me as a little more than a convenient book disposal. After all, it's hard to say you're friendly with someone who scowls so bluntly just because your hand's such. I don't think you know what a scowl is, sir. You really are just incapable of ha having decent human interaction. <laughs> Makina, do you have any hobbies? Shumi? I mean, that is technically a hobby. It is far from the most exciting of hobbies, but I, I get it. Solo. That's not good. Thank you for being who you are. Uh, no. Also, no. Um, <laughs> at the company I work at, solitary hobbies are fundamentally discouraged. They place a lot of stress on keeping up some form of communication with others. When it comes to the interests of the employees, the basics are alcohol, women, and gambling. But it's a bit difficult to own up that in front of the boss. Therefore, when asked, some of them just sh uh, came up with safe-sounding conventional hobby like Shogi or Go. When the superiors acted favorably to those answers, the end result was that the hobbies column of the employees' sur survey data recorded an overwhelming number of shogi buffs. I'm sorry. I just turned to Bob Dylan all of a sudden. Hey, although going with the flow, I'm sorry, is pretty much the defining Japanese characteristic. It's still something of a pathetic. Is that accurate? I've never known. You learn something new every day. Well, given or having given them a knife says it'll be a fuck. Having given them a knife safe hobby like fuck 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 fuck. Sounds about right. I guess I can't really say too much. Hmm? Nothing, just talking to myself. Incidentally, once you're given the, once you're the one giving the surveys out, in other words, an executive type, the hobby of choice would be gardening. Not something you can do when you're living out of a barracks. It can be. That's what this shit is for me, and it's kind of fucking the only thing that helps keep me sane in this world. Um, if you can call what I do sane. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's better to have some interest than not, even if they're really worthless. For example, the aforementioned employees and their wine, women, and song. Even then, if they can help you find a single common interest with someone, your hobbies are worthwhile as social lubricant, even if they're worthless in every other respect. This is something I heard uh, secondhand from a senior employee at my job, but sometimes you get cases like this. Are you telling another story because you can't be trusted with this? This is a story about a man who took a business trip to... to No four-letter word should give me that much trouble. Gifu. 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 Um, prefecture. Uh, it was a group expedition. When the purpose of field testing new equipment that had just been deployed throughout his company. At the time, the man in question was a new employee, not even out of his training period. Nonetheless, he found himself taking a long, bumpy ride in the mountains on a company bus, accompanied by the chief of his special department. <clears throat> special department, you say? <laughs> 
Uh, that's my department. Um, the man didn't have the first clue why he'd been selected for the trip, let alone why he'd be expected to do on it. To make matters worse, he was sitting next to a powerful superior who barely, he barely knew. In short, the man was about ready to vomit from sheer terror and anxiety. He fought desperately to keep calm, but his face was pale as a sheet. <clears throat> God damn. The bus finally reached its destination at the foot of Mount That Thing. In the That Thing. After many unpleasant hours. But the man's relief was temporary, as his boss informed him they would be attending a large banquet in a high, in a high class inn that night. Nailed it. Corporate banquets are basically a cruel kind of talent show. No employees were expected to perform some skill for the amusement of gathered v VIPs. For them all them vips you hear so goddamn much about. The newbies from each department mounted the stage one after another. Quite a few croaked out of popular karaoke ballads with stiff faces, but there were also some pretty competent juggling acts. Um. <sighs> Even one stand-up comedy duo, which got some laughs doing imitations of superiors. The man watched other acts with a flustering heart. His, her his turn was approaching fast, but <clears throat> he was basically a walking, breathing lump of artistic incompetence. <coughs> it's an, it's, Jesus fucking Christ, I'm losing my goddamn mind. What is wrong with me? <clears throat> I'm a fucking lump of artistic incompetence. I'm losing my fucking voice is what's happening. I, don't, I need that to not happen. I have to record all the week's videos tomorrow. That's not cool. Shit, I apologize if my... Fuck. <clears throat> An asocial type without a single talent worth Jesus Christ worth performing in front of others. Just as he was wondering. Nailed it. I bet, nope. Just as he was wondering whether he could escape by pretending a sudden illness, the man was practically kicked out into the stage by senior employees. For lack of a better thought, he started to sing. But the man didn't know any popular songs. Worse, he couldn't remember. You've just described every intro I've ever made. Every? Fuck. Worse, he couldn't remember any standard folk songs or children's music that might have worked in a pinch. The man went instead with the theme song of a superhero TV show, Lightspeed General Die Markarov. Nailed it, which he'd loved as a kid. By this point, he couldn't help but feel a growing sense of despair. This was, of course, the man's first time singing in public, and he didn't have much of a voice. Within seconds, he was showered in jeers from the audience. The hell are you singing? What's wrong with you? Hey, asshole. Well, you just thought, you're just making that up on the spot, you twat. Well, that's enough. I'm gonna need you to get off the stage, you suck. Although he wasn't the type to break down in tears, the man felt the deep urge to dig himself into a hole and crawl into it. Only sheer stubbornness carried him through the last of the humiliating notes. When it was over, the man quickly bowed from the stage and raced back to his seat. On that walk back from the stage, the man had a thought. I'd wish I'd learned a popular song or two. Yes, so there was a lesson behind this story. But I'm going to need you from now on to stop Yuji from ever telling a story again. Lest it kill the both of us, Makina. Um, well, if you look at it that way, then you're right. But the story isn't over yet. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. With the equipment test wrapped up... Dude, I can't... I have to end this episode here at some point, because it's going to be shorter... But I, I, I can't, I'm, I can't word, and it's a problem. <laughs> when the equipment test wrapped up, the man had returned to his new assignment at a branch office in Shizuoka. It's Shizuoka. Nailed it. Someone called out to him as he was dealing with the transfer paperwork. So, you were the newbie who sang Dai Makrof at the banquet in Gfu? <laughs> Sorry. The man's breath caught in his throat. He figured out by now that the main job of his superiors was to flaunt their authority by picking up the smallest mistakes and then rubbing his nose on them. And the manager speaking to him was infamous for the zealous leadership of his underlings. Frankly, the man was about to piss his pants. Terrible. He swallowed and chewed his lip, bitter thoughts running through his head. What the hell is he going to blame on me? How long will I have to grovel? But the manager's words took him by surprise. <clears throat> Jesus fucking Christ, this scared the shit out of me. I loved that show when I was a kid. It was fabulous. Did you see that man in his underpants? Um, what? The man blinked, dumbfounded by this unexpected development. You from Hiroshima, kid? Your voice has changed like four times. <laughs> According to the manager, Tom Markaroff, reruns were played relentlessly every weekday afternoon in a local station. Practically every ch ch child in Hiroshima grew up watching the show. 
but the man wasn't a Hiroshima native. In the area he lived as a child, the Children Encore Theater Program would broadcast old episodes of the show every summer. He just happened to see a few. Wild. Even so, the manager must have been really pleased to find a fellow Daimakara fan. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm definitely not. As he began to pull a few strings to the man's benefit. One night after work, the man returned to his bed in the company door and found that a white plastic bag had been tucked underneath the sheets of his neatly made bed. He didn't remember putting it there himself, and when he asked around, nobody else had any idea where it came from. The bag contained a huge jelly roll and a cup of instant ramen. <gasps> Dude, I want that right now. <laughs> As a new employee, the man had to eat dinner at the set time of 5 p.m. By 10 p.m., lights out at the dorm, all of the trainees would be starving. <clears throat> This supplemental meal was therefore a very considerate present. The man had an idea of who was responsible. Most likely, his Daimak, a rough body from the top, was the only one who could have pulled it off. On top of the early dinner time, learning the ropes as a trainee is particularly tiring. His Daimak, rough body had probably figured he had a hard time getting his young body to fall asleep on an empty stomach. The man actually didn't have any particularly big appetite, and wasn't the type to be troubled by irregular meals. But then again, as a new employee, he didn't have much money, he could spend freely on snacks and such. A little sugar was extremely welcome. If I get caught, they'll be punished too. You take so fucking long. Are you. Cosme Yuji, occupation storyteller, is the Shannon L. Shook occupation intro maker. <laughs> For fucking videos. If I get caught, they'll, put, they'll, uh, they'll get punished too. So the man split the smuggled food with the other trainees in his room, and they all devoured their shares greedily. As the presents from the Dakimoff buddy at the time were known as the Dakimoff supply group, drop, Jesus Christ, continued, the talentless, quiet, and hobbyless triple threat contender from the so a social crown suddenly found himself getting along with the group in the dorm. Oh, thank you. To the Dakimoff connection. Dude, that sounds like a movie that I probably wouldn't watch because I don't watch a ton of movies and just doesn't really sound like a movie I'd watch. And three months later, when the man's training period came to an end, it was once again his demograph buddy whose recommendation got him assigned the chi Chiba. The, the Chiba. I like the Chibi branch office, personally, but that's just because I am a fan of muffins. Um, speaking of muffins, in other words, when it comes to hobbies and interests, everything is fine. Finding friends you can talk to about some common interests whatever is a very valuable thing. Sometimes something that small can be a trigger for gaining a huge leg up in life. That's the normal. That's the that's the normal of the story. Nailed it. <laughs> Me too, Makino. Me too. I thought this was a pretty meaningful story. I guess it didn't quite get across. I think he was also kind of saying you could use the playing dolls and wandering by yourself as a as a thing as well, but also yes. Well, more or less, when you're young, you should mess around with all sorts of things. Just try and find out something that grabs you, even if it's stupid crap. Tits. Definitely tits. After all that spacing out, that's a pretty sharp question. I gl <laughs> Sorry. Took me. I... Okay. <laughs> I glanced down towards the pile of borrowed books I'm holding in my hands. I suppose right now I don't really have anything other than reading that qualifies. Me too, baby girl. You aren't really listening to a word I say, are you? Well, not that you really need to. Go get Amane to make something. Yeah, if I'm if I'm in the mood. Okay. Oh, fucking freaking nature. Um, with love is what I say. This. Um, I see. I learned my own lesson from this conversation. If there's a mention of food in the middle of a story, Makita will not remember a single word. I'll have to be more careful next time. Yuji's room. You mean fucking Amine's room, apparently. Um, 
anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm sorry this one's a little, well, it's about 30 minutes. It's a little on the shorter side, but uh, again, my voice, for some reason, I'm, I might be dying. If I've established this enough, I might be dying. Which, if I'm fucked for tomorrow, that's a problem. Because I still have, what, I still have no game to record. I still got on a hunt to record, and I still got ReZero to record. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Because I got Ruby, I got Steins Gate already. Which, that was fucking good. I really liked that. I missed 90% of what happened. But I really liked the characters in that show. I'm off to a great start. Um, and I got two of these done. So, not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. But, uh, I really hope my voice holds up for tomorrow. Because otherwise, that's going to suck ass. Um... Anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and give it a little bit of love. I really appreciate it. As I mentioned in the previous one, if you guys care at all about reaction videos and stuff like that, please, please, please give the poll in the description a look. I would really appreciate you guys throwing a vote in there. Uh, maybe, you know, just if it doesn't even, you don't even have to really watch it. You just like, I just like this show and this one 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 because there's 15 goddamn options in there. I put so many in there. Madness. I just wanted happy shows, and there was a lot of them. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, give it some love. Uh, tell me what you guys think down below. Um, hopefully the, the little diversions weren't too bad this time. Um, some definitely were, no doubt. But uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. And Again, I'm going to try from this point on, at least until I can get Pokemon started back up on the channel, to get two episodes of Grisaia out, out each week. Uh, I don't know if anyone has a preference on week on which day of the week to do it. I honestly don't know. Um, might do one on Saturday as well. So we have one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, just because Rube... Fuck you in the neck, Xbox. What are you doing? Um, just like, oh, I'm on now. Fuck you are. Bitch. Um, like, uh, so I might do that because... Uh, I don't have to spend that night uploading Ruby because I upload it in the middle, like way the, the, the fucking previous week and then just have it ready to set up and go when it's then. So I can have that day to set up another episode. So if you guys want to have uh, Saturday, Sunday episodes of Grisaia, tell me what you guys think. Um, anyway, tools, tools, and lemons, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm a go and maybe die. Here's hoping I don't. Um, toodles, tools. I just did this. We literally just, I'm done. You fucking.